Hi, and welcome to Tammy's What Not to Give Up, Lent Intervention Number 1. Now, it's a beautiful day out there again today, and so I thought I'd talk about something quite obvious. And to be perfectly honest, Tammy has never been anything but obvious. So what I'm going to talk about today is not giving up hope. Now, I kind of first heard about hope when I heard this Bible verse that said, Faith, hope, and charity would follow you all the days of your life. Now, I think as a child, I kind of thought like my good friend Deb Margolin did, because she thought that faith, hope, and charity were these sort of mean old aunts who followed you around all the time and made sure you behaved right. But of course, as I got older, hope changed. Hope became that thing that I had on Christmas morning or, or even on my birthday when I hoped that I was going to have a pony tied to, you know, my bed frame or tied to the workbench in the basement or, or at least standing outside in the yard. I just hoped I was going to get a pony. But then, of course, as you get older, hope changes and hope becomes something like, well, you hope that the war is going to end. Or you hope that your mom is going to live long and enjoy her old age. Or maybe you just hope that justice prevails. And then, of course, just recently, we had a beautiful representation of hope. And that was in those posters that were was made by, uh, what's his name, Shepard Ferry, when he made posters for Obama, when Obama ran for president. And there was that beautiful multicolored picture of Obama, and it just said that big word, hope. But, you know, right now, it's a little bit hard to imagine hope on a poster or on a billboard or, or even on the television. It's just a little bit harder to find. And it sort of feels like, you know, it's not out there in the world being broadcast out there in front of us so that we could just believe in it and hope in it and, and just move around and hope. But it's as if, and I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm just sitting in the dark closet of my despair. So I've been reading somebody that I want to tell you all about, and she's a good friend of mine. Well, she's not really a friend. She's a Facebook friend, but I wish she was my friend because she is so smart, and I love what she has to say. And her name is Rebecca Solnit. Now, Rebecca has written this book called Hope in the Dark. Now, what she says is that, you know, our hope is not going to be standing out there in the spotlight center stage, that actually where our hope is going to be found is backstage, you know, behind the curtains where it's dark, or, or even in the very, very dark, gloomy, moldy corners of our closet of despair. And we're going to have to look at our hope and look for our hope and make our hope work for us in the dark. Now, I have always been known, or at least I've always liked to think of myself, as a militant optimist. I'm one of those people who likes to think that things are just going to turn out right. But, you know, this is not the kind of hope that Rebecca is talking about. She isn't talking about just sitting around hoping everything is going to be all right. She's talking about a kind of hope that makes you uh, want to do things, to make things right. It's a kind of hope that gets you inspired to action. It's a kind of hope that uh, helps us face those hard realities. It's a kind of hope that helps us look at uncertainty as a kind of spaciousness that gives us more room to act. It's a kind of hope that might help us see our closet of despair as a, a slightly bigger, slightly brighter place. And it might give us the courage or, or the impetus or, or just the idea to stand up in the dark and start reaching around for that string to pull the light and to turn it on. So today, what I want you not to give up is your hope. And to help you with that, I decided to post a few of my inspirations. Uh, there is a video down there of Rebecca Solnit talking about hope and talking about her book, Hope in the Dark, and I hope y'all will look at that video, but go out and buy the book too. And there's also a film of Deb Margolin, my good friend, you know, the one who thought that Faith, Hope, and Charity was following her around everywhere. Well, there's a little clip down there that um, shows her talking about theater and humanity and, and hope, and it's real beautiful, and I find it inspiring. And there's also a little clip about Shepard Fiery, and uh, he talks about his commitment as an artist and how he feels real committed to making things change. 
and how he is a person that does hope and have hope for the future. So that's it for me today, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Keep hoping, y'all.